won't kill the event. Hopefully. Oh. There we go. It's gone green. Was it green before? Yeah. OBS has been trying do, 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 do. Can you hear me? Am I here? Says I am. But I'm really not. Cha, cha, cha. Bastard. Excuse my German in case it's lying. <laughs> do, 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 do. Boo, 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 boo. Peak concurrent. We're not receiving data at a fast enough rate. You're going to turn off a bunch of nest Buffering. Cams. That's the only difference. The stream, stream status just went to good. good. Gonna we are live! Yay! That only took five minutes. Hi, wow. guys. <laughs> Hello. You missed so much um, carnage. <laughs> oh, We've been amazing. singing the... and then realised that no one was watching us. We did an amazing introduction. It was heartwarming. It was, it was uh, evocative. And then we lost it. It was probably just a little bit silly, though. It was. But welcome, Hi. everybody. I'm Jan. I'm here with Mike. We're in the same room, which is very exciting. It hasn't happened yes. before today. Have I seen you before ever in real life? No. No, Mike. Hi. We've done lots of work together, but it's yes. all been through the screen. Um, folks, we're here to, well, first off, to talk about the amazing Godot engine and talk about the Kickstarter and get you guys all excited about it. But we're also talking about the great crossover opportunities with Blender. Uh, before we go any further, there is a Ben, but he doesn't technically exist. He's sort of off to the side doing technical support he's been kneeling by the computer trying to fix the frame rate um i've done two and now forgot to press the stream button before yeah no we pressed the stream button and then we saw that nobody was getting it and this the stream said it's just said bad but um, we still see you yes youtube <laughs> probably did. okay so today we're gonna talk about a bunch of things but why don't we start with a real simple um mikey tell me why do you think Blender and Godot is a kind of mix that we should be adding together? Like, what's what's good about this combination? Well, with any with any good combination, they're both open source, and this is this is great for the community because it allows us to, um, especially if you're skilled, to add to those, and it also means that they're often very community driven, which means that when you want a feature, the devs are more likely to put it in mm. because the devs are the people you're working alongside all the time to improve such software. So you often find that um, a Blender, let's say Blender for example, because that's my bread and butter of course, yep. um, that's come leaps and bounds over the last few years and even surpasses things like Maya and 3D Studio Max now because it's community driven. Right. So when a new feature needs to be added, you don't need to have a big old meeting about it. They, well, someone will start implementing it if it's missing. Which, if you're watching the live stream we did with Juan a couple of days ago, he said very much the same thing. That they're catching up very fast with Unity in particular, with the amount of features they have, because they can. They're very yes. agile like that. Very nimble. Yep. Uh, so, Mikey, you wrote a wonderful, uh, well, first a blog. Yes. And then a YouTube video. And now the blog is being spread onto the Godot engine itself. Yeah, hopefully, I'd like. Well, hopefully, um, it's going to become part of the main documentation. Which is, I know, it's which very is great. Exciting. We're contributing. Yes. Well, you really it was your work, <laughs> um, Mikey. Talk us through very quickly. Like, don't recreate the blog post because people no. can read that for themselves. Yes. What are the steps? What do you need to do to bring content? Let's say uh, you've made this wonderful three D model in, in Blender. Yeah. How do I bring it into Godot? What do I need to do? So if you if you think about a model, it's not just a model. It's a series of information that you that you put together. So you've got your mesh data, what the actual model looks like. Right. And then you've got your textures that you put on top. Mm -hmm. And those have to be defined with what's called UV unwrapping, so that you can map these 2D textures onto a 3D model. So you've got you've got those parts, and then you've also got animations as well. Right. Not all models will have animations, uh, but some will. Okay. So um, Godot is obviously new, and it doesn't support all of the formats that one would usually be used to when it comes to exporting to another program. I mean, FBX is very commonplace. Unfortunately, it's proprietary. So um, Godot don't have real access to it at the moment. And if they did, they'd kind of have to fudge their way through. Right. And if Autodesk changed something, then it breaks. And Vice versa. So, um, Godot, there are there are three main ways of getting your file out. Unfortunately, that they are well, Wavefront or an OBJ, an object file right. that works, but you would lose your animations in that. Okay. Um, then you've got Collada, a .dae file that's well established. Mm -hmm. And I was playing with a GITF 2.0 file earlier on, 
and I couldn't get it to work. So I don't know if that's a version of Blender and it. So, you know, this is one of the downsides occasionally that you, you get dragged through the mud. But Collada works absolutely fine. Um, and whether or not you're exporting into Godot or anything else, you often run into an issue when, and everybody does this, especially if it's their first time, um, when you get your model in, mm -hmm. the model's sitting there, and you like, where's my textures? Yeah. And... The thing is that Blender has its own way of building up its materials. Godot has its own way of building up its materials. And, and even within Blender itself, whether you're using Blender, uh, Render, internal render, Cycles, a third-party rendering engine, they all handle the materials differently, which means they need to be set up differently. And the same is true if you export it. Whether or not it's Godot, Unreal, Unity, you have to recreate those materials. And that's something that... Everybody forgets yeah. when, they're, when they're new. And sometimes you even get the base material coming over. That can be really confusing because you hear, <laughs> oh, it's not supposed to work, and then you get your texture applied. And that happened to me when I was it recording did. the video. <laughs> and I was like, but I've done this six times in a row in practice, and it didn't work. But there we go. Um, so I, I must, there must have been a cache somewhere that stored it in that case. Um, so once it's over in there, you have to recreate it. That's the thing. Right. Um, but your animation data and things like that, they come across absolutely fine. And then you just have to pick. And um, over on the characters course, we do show how you can make multiple actions. So you can just pick from walk, run, idle, whatever your character's animation or object's animation happens to be. Mm -hmm. So there Good. we go. That, that, that's a brief summary. And uh, for those of you who don't know, have forgotten, need reminding, didn't care, but do now... Um, we are actually adding a small sub-course free to all our Kickstarters with this course, right? So if you kickstart this course and we are successful, not only will you get Discovering Godot and whatever rewards you get, no matter what you got, uh, you pledged, as long as you are at the £10, the I'm guessing this course pledge, yeah. um, we're bringing in a second course, which is exactly that, that workflow, right? How to bring things from Blender, primarily Blender, and make them work in Godot. Yes. Uh, we haven't got a name for it yet. No, we haven't. So if you've got a suggestion... If you've for, got a suggestion... For, for a name. <laughs> you should do that. Um, while we do that, let me do some quick... Uh, I did notice uh, some people are a little upset there's no shaking JPEG, so... Um... Shaking <laughs> Okay, cool. Uh, I'm contractually off the hook. Good. Uh, this is how you fulfill Kickstarter promises. Um... Oh, they're, they're like three minutes behind us, so we'll see those suggestions in a bit. Uh, I want to say hi to folks for joining us. Hi, Mark. I can see you there being all the irreplaceable jelly. Um, I always change his name on these things. Sorry. I know what your real name is. Um, the irrevealable jelly. Um, ben is typing from over there, which is confusing. Well done. He's got magic hands. Um, ben is pointing out this will actually probably be a separate section rather than a separate course. We're talking about merging this so it's a, a subsection in there. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to dive in for one second, guys. We want to know how long this delay is. So here's the secret word. It is blamange. Type blamange in the chat now, and we'll uh, as soon as we see it, we'll know how long the delay is. Thanks, guys. If you can spell it. Yeah, just be the best. <laughs> we believe in you. Um, all right. Yeah, everybody's now peeking with blamange on Google. Blamange. So the little... <laughs> what is a blamange? It's a delicious dessert. I don't know if it's gluten-free, so my wife won't be able to eat it because she's celiacs. I used to have <coughs> strawberry blamange. When I was Hi. Blamange. Pocket. Hi, Pocket. Um, We've got BLA, so I think it's 25 sec 20 seconds. 20 seconds? Much better than I thought it was. Yes. yes. Um, Not five minutes like Let's thought. talk about this thing, which was a course and is now looking like a section, but it's the same thing. You're getting it for free. Um, let's first be very clear what this course isn't, which Ben hates, but we're going to do this very clearly. We are not teaching you how to design characters in this course. No. Because we have that course. Well, you have that course. Yes. And frankly, doing that in a section is just not going to do it justice. It, well, it's out of scope, basically. We, right. we want to make sure it's to the point. It's, it's getting your model that you've already made or that you've downloaded. You know, there's places like BlendSwap that you can go get your models from or even um, TurboSquid. I think you can buy models there. So you've bought a model, you've created a model, and you want to get it into Godot. It will mm -hmm. be specific to that. Although lots of the teachings in it will apply... Right, elsewhere as well, because a lot of the workflow, whatever you're doing, tends to match up. It's just specifics in right. this case. So it's going to be how to maximize that, and we'll, I don't, we haven't discussed this, so we'll put you on the, on the spot a little bit. Spot, hook, on the hook. On yeah. the spot hook, on the hooky spot. Um, are we going to talk about the tips to make these things look as professional as possible? How to use your normal maps the best way and all the rest of it? Or is it just going to be, this is the workflow? 
Well, it depends on um, how we go about creating those normal maps. So often, um, certainly when I'm working with textures, um, I will either generate the normal maps myself from the model that I've created, which is much more advanced than, let's say, going to a texture site like textures.com. Brilliant site, not affiliated or anything, um, but they give you 15 free credits every day. And let's say you had a pavement or a, a wall or a skin texture that you want. Often you end up with uh, the diffuse map or the albedo, as it's called in uh, Godot. Um, then you've got your normal map, as you've just mentioned, and maybe a diffuse, a displacement. There's there's, there's loads, I've said diffuse twice, roughness is what I was thinking of there. Um, but yeah, you can apply those textures. So if they're already pre-done, I mean, that's what I'd recommend to most people anyway. If you're trying to make a model, unless you really, really need it to be unique with its texturing, right? Um, otherwise you're going out with a camera yourself and exploring the world around you. Taking pictures. Yeah. Um, cool. So we're going to, on top of you know teaching how to use Godot and all the rest of it, just look at that workflow, look at the best practices, look at how to make this work. And you were playing with it a little earlier and you had this lovely ceramic monkey head. Yes, that was fun. And uh, you seemed quite happy with the results, actually. Yes, I was, I, I was really surprised. I wasn't... So, <laughs> I was shocked at how good it was. Okay, so I, I've played a lot with Unity and obviously Unreal is known for its being beautiful. Yeah. Um, so I, I was playing with Suzanne the monkey, as you do, applied a broken sort of paint as if... If, as if a red wall had got the plaster coming away, I applied that to Suzanne. It looked pretty awesome yeah. in Blender, but as we all know, Eevee's not out yet, so we don't have our real-time rendering engine, and it was just chugging away. And then I moved the model over into Godot, and I was blown away by the quality <laughs> of what was there. I was like, oh, that's actually really good. The 3D renderer from Godot 3.0 onwards is really solid. It's it's a PBR, so physically based rendering. So it's a, it's well pseudo accurate as it goes. So that's in line with what you'd expect usually from the Unreal right. engines of the world. And I think than... there's currently not a lot. Well, I know there's not a lot of high end tutorials on three D content, which is one of the things this Kickstarter's for, right? So I've seen people saying you've only mentioned the first four products, um, projects, not products in this course, right? So we've got this word game, no graphics yeah. in that. We've got Hoppy Days, which is a funny game. We've got Heistmeister, we've only mentioned the first three, not the first four. After that, we're thinking of going with 3D and we have some ideas with that. Uh, maybe a 3D platform game, uh, maybe a shooter, like a... I think somewhere between Star Fox and R-Type is what I've got in my head. Ooh. Um, but we want to get the feedback during the course for that. However, if you have strong feelings there, that's when this kind of visual familiarity is going to start coming in. Yes, definitely. Um, and we do want to do some stuff with uh, characters, maybe even a toucan. I don't, I've don't. i left my toucan at home. I'm at Ben's house. This is not my home. <laughs> um, I didn't bring the toucan. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to take a quick look at these. So I'm using Ben's computer. His monitor is incredibly... Thing. I can't read the font. It's very small. Uh, blancmange. Yes. Okay. A blancmange is a pudding, a dessert. Yeah. You've done great spelling it. I appreciate the help of people there. Uh, omelette du fromage. Is ce n'est pas une omelette du fromage. C'est une blancmange. Un blancmange. It's it's a blancmange, not an omelette. Um, do, 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 do. Okay. If you guys have questions that aren't about jiggling JPEGs, um, if you could type them in QSTN and then type your question, it's much easier for us to see. Uh, the green arrow turned Batman model. Sure, we'll go with that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, we were talking earlier about not just your 3D models, but general um, assets and bringing them in as well. Um, and certainly this is something that we can cover. I yeah. learnt today that Godot doesn't support TIFFs, nope. which is quite a standard uh, image format. And I was sat there scratching my head because unfortunately Godot didn't tell me it doesn't support <laughs> TIFFs. It just sat there... Surprise! Doing nothing. <laughs> I was, I was just kept dragging them in. It's like, is it crashed? <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> um, yeah, so there are some formats that Godot doesn't support out of the box. I believe there are plugins for a lot of them, but so, let's talk about some of the ones it can't do. Uh, really, most of them, with the exception of TIFF, are proprietary, right? Yes. Um, it's a bit like, I likened it to Linux. If you know the Linux platform, if you download it, you then have to download additional things, plugins, so you can play movies, listen to music, look at pictures. Obviously, some of them are not proprietary, things like JPEG now. Right. 
you know, that's in the open. Um, but I was, you say MP3 is not natively supported. MP3 is not so natively supported. to get a plugin. But things like OG, or OGG. What I do is I just run it through Audacity and transfer MP3, get a plugin for it and transfer it from MP3 to yes. OG and use that. Um, OGG. Um, I believe WAV files are, I know WAV files are supported. Um, uh, but you don't want WAV files in general. No, <laughs> they're not well compressed. Um, do, 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 do. Why don't they wear Godo shirts or gotten buttons or hat? Uh, we don't know where to get them. I will make one. Stash.godo.org. Yeah, I'm making a shirt. Here is my shirt. There we go. God, Godo. I'm very creative with the visual arts. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to leave that on Ben's note now. That'll be a nice surprise for him. Uh, but we actually did talk about merchandising. Um, the reason we haven't gone for merchandising was twofold. One, it means that fulfillment is a real problem. Shipping across the world suddenly becomes a logistical nightmare and it could slow down the delivery of the course, which we're worried about. And two, it feels a little gimmicky. Yeah, yeah, I, like, I can get that. Buy the game dev mug. Uh, I did put through a proposal uh, to get custom-made bobbleheads of all the game dev team, which wasn't shot down, and Sam actually found a company that could do it for £150 per bobblehead. Ouch. So we would have to judge you somewhere in the region of £300 just to make that... With international uh, shipping, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. So uh, we're not doing the bobblehead thing. Uh, I was expecting a pirate hat with a, a Godot robot. Oh, that would be good. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah. Let's talk about, actually, there's an interesting thing going on in chat. Um, you do need Audacity. Okay, so Blender and Godot are a really good pairing, right? The yes. open source mentality, you can develop it, just you or a small team, if you've got the patience and you're willing to learn the software, you can make incredible assets. But there's a few other pieces of software that were really useful. What would you recommend? So with uh, sound, sound's a big one. It's so overlooked. If you... Uh, I mean, we've had this before. If, if for some reason I've done a recording, a video for people to follow, and I've not selected the decent microphone, it hurts my ears now. Yep. And that does make a huge difference. And having decent sound in your game, well, it, it just, or, or whatever you're doing, it will blow people away. It makes that quality difference. Yeah. That you, it's a very subjective thing, but it's very noticeable. People notice bad audio and they maybe not notice good or excellent audio because it's there it needs to be present. Yeah, that's something I learned from theatre. If someone notices the sound design, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, and then we've got... Um, so what software would you use for that? Um, there's certainly Audacity. That's that's the primary one I'd jump to that's free. Mm -hmm. I mean, let, let's face it. If we're, if we're entering something as an indie or the first time we've ever done it, then you don't want to end up spending... Uh, I mean, I used to use SoundForge... Yeah. ages and ages ago um, personally for music composition I tend to go to Fruity Loops a lot of the time but uh, again whatever door digital audio workstation you, you actually go ahead and use doesn't matter it's just a tool yeah. I've said this to so many people it doesn't matter it's a tool as long as you get the output you want from it and you can do it in a good timely manner then perfect yep uh, do, 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 do. how easy is uh, oh, Ben is answering questions too. I was wondering why Ben was over there. Um, how easy is Godot to use in comparison to Unity for a Blender artist with no game engine experience, Ben? We've got a question from Ben here. Mm. Um, how easy is Blender to use compared to Unity for someone with no game engine experience? What was your uh, journey? What was my journey? I, I thought that Godot was... Once you get your head around the paradigm it uses, and if you're used to Blender, anything from there is easier than <laughs> Blender's interface. <laughs> Um, Blender's interface is just scary when you first ah. use it. Yeah. I was like, your interface is nothing compared to mine. Check this out. Um, so um, the the interface itself, they hide a lot of the things away from you, which yeah. I which I kind of like um, because it doesn't clutter up your display. But what is confusing is that if you've not enabled that thing, it's not there. Right. So you can't see it. It's very easy not to know that's an option. Yes, because yeah. it's not displayed to you in any way. So, And again, with the unfortunate, there's not great documentation for Godot at the moment. So you end up in this position where you can end up scratching your head for a while. And that's, that's ultimately what we want to do here. We want to make using this wonderful engine so much easier than it is currently. Yep. And, and obviously, the easier it becomes to use, the more people use it. And we get this cycle of development, which ultimately means we've got another wonderful game engine for you guys to make games yeah. 
For sure. I'm looking at the questions. Got one from Keith. Uh, can you use things from the Unity Asset Store in Blender? Oh, yes, is the short answer. Hmm. Um, it, when you download an asset, obviously things like its scripts that come along with it, if it's got, they, those won't work in Blender. You'd have to rewrite them if yeah. you wanted to use some of the scripts, even if that were possible. But the asset side, often they're supplied as an FBX or a Collada file ah. or an OBJ. Clarification, I meant Unity Store in Godot. Okay. Probably not directly. Uh, if you're trying to pull models, you would have to pull it through Blender, I'm guessing. Yes, you'd have uh, to. Because they're going to be rigged it... differently. No. Um, so if you if you got yourself a, a skeletal mesh, is a, is typically a skeletal yep. mesh, um, and there are, I think there's 14 or 15 minimum bones that you need. But if we go right back to basics, say you've bought a, a tree pack mm -hmm. in, in the Unity Asset Store, and obviously you don't want to have to keep buying tree packs because you switched over to another engine. Now, you may find that that tree pack's models are in... Well, let's do a worst-case scenario. The models are in FBX, and all the textures are TIFFs. Yeah. Um, that would be a very bad asset pack. <laughs> well, not the FBX, but the TIFFs might be, uh, because they're not compressed. Uh, you know, a PNG would be a much better solution to that. So you would bring them into you br bring it into Blender, and then you'd re-export it, probably as a Collada file, and there you go. You've got your asset ready to use right. elsewhere. Um, the only thing I would say with that, and me being me, I'd say, do you have the rights to change the format to something else? Yeah, check your licensing. If you were doing it in a commercial game. If you're doing it for yourself, no one cares, basically. And assuming it's not just visual assets, if you're doing something like a tool from the asset pack, it almost certainly won't work because it's going to call API. It's going to call things yes, in the engine that don't exist, right? Because Unity is not Godot. Even if you're using C Sharp in both, it's going to call things that Godot just doesn't have. So that is a... Almost certain no, with a few rare exceptions. Um, do, 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 do. Don't have any I, I could think of another asset that wouldn't work. So I used a tree as an example there. If the tree had been designed to be used in um, Unity's tree, thing, oh, where you can paint yeah. the trees on the terrain, that would involve more work. The base model and everything would still be there, but perhaps the way that you can change the leaves or the color and all of that lot, how it would bring in the different assets and combine them when you're painting the tree that won't happen. So you'd have to do that yourself manually. But you could certainly use those assets. Yep. Question, have you tried uh, blend shapes with Godot so far? Oh, shape keys, yes. I haven't, he has. How was it? Great. Cool. <laughs> um, I, I, I was playing the other day with a mushroom. So it started all like this and then branched out like a beautiful... Aww. Ballerina mushroom. I don't know. Um, but it, it, was, it was lovely for the eye to see. But th that is something that provide, it wouldn't work if you exported it again as an OBJ because it doesn't have the animation data. Um, a lot of the times, these animations, you have to bake each individual keyframe. Yep. And then you would trigger that animation on whatever you wanted within the game engine itself. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, we were talking earlier about uh, helpful other pieces of software and you mentioned sound yeah and sound is, is critical i mean if you ever played the original quake with the soundtrack by nine inch nails just the first time you hear that ambient noise in that soundtrack mm. just solidifies that as a memory like that is a core gaming memory for people who were there at the time it's part of the experience it absolutely is um but what else could we use let's talk about 2d graphics or so 2d sprites. graphics well you've got gimp gimp gimp's a good one that you can go reach out now um Kriter, Critter, how are yeah, you? We've had some debate on how to pronounce that. I say Kriter, he says Critter. K-R-I-T-A. Um, that's great if you're if you're more artistic with your style. GIMP would be great for your sort of pixel art and that style. Um, and uh, Rick over on the on the Unity 3D course, he was using a, vo a voxel art game, um, generator. Um, it generates a solid model. It doesn't turn it into voxels, but it was very good for that kind of Minecraft, low mm. poly esque sort of style. And then I would take a model like that into Blender and make it look even better. That's what that's the sort of thing. So again, using multiple tools. Yep. So I would I will often uh, grab a model, take something out into GIMP, repaint it, touch it up, bring it back in, and that's simply because the painting tools in Blender, unless you've bought an add-on are mediocre. 
at best. It's better than Microsoft Paint, though. Anything's better than Microsoft Paint. Unless that's the game you're trying to make. I mean, the right tool for the right job, but I don't know what game you'd be trying to make with MS Paint that you'd want to get out in the world. I mean, it, it might exist. I'm sure there's a, there's a good case for it. I can't think what it might be. Uh, this font is really small. Uh, hooking the RPG to a fancy Wi-Fi enabled food processor. Totally worth, worth doing. You can do that. You can control the chat thing. Um, I'm going to see if I can make it bigger. While we're talking, a uh, quick status update on the Kickstarter and the state of the course. Ben has been code reviewing Hoppy Days with me today, which is the platform game that I'm about to start coding. Uh, he's got some really cool insights. We had a long debate about my ability to bring in something called code smell, which I look forward to sharing with people. Um, yes, that was my reaction. Like I didn't know my, my code smelled. Uh, it's to do with why are you casting a, a boolean as a float? Like What are you trying to accomplish there? And... That was a fun conversation, uh, but the I, I think the thing will be ready to record. Mike has very helpfully brought over a, a better computer for me to record on. My laptop yep. is great for everything except recording, and it was killing the frame rates of everything I recorded. Fine in a text-based game. If I release a course with a game, this, this is a great engine for 2D things, and it's 10 frames a second. No one is making that game. <laughs> um, oh, you made it bigger. <sighs> That's so good. Um, what else can I tell you about? We've been talking about the possibility of new pledges. We haven't, we were thinking about maybe announcing a new pledges today. Nothing that really works. We have, I mean, we have these great bundles. We have the, the Gift for Godot thing. Yeah. Uh, we might look at some higher tier things. There are people who already have lifetime and want to spend the extra money to help fund this thing. But the short thing is uh, we need to keep getting the word out. We are 77, 78% funded last time I checked. Which is great. We have five days to go. We can totally make this. This is well within our grasp. Oh, easily, yes. But everything we can do. So get the word out there. Share this with anyone that you think might be interested. Um, if you can afford to up your pledge, we really appreciate it. If you don't, we completely understand. Um, even if you manage to just up it by a, a pound, it's we totally appreciate it. While we're on that subject, people have been asking. So we announced this Gift for Godot pledge on the live stream with Lars two days ago. Um, and people have been saying, I already have a higher tier pledge. How can I also donate? So if you have pledged at any level and you pledge exactly the amount that the gift for Godot is in your currency. So if it's uh, British pounds, pounds sterling, 55 pounds, I haven't done the calculation for dollars, but look at what that is. If you add that to your pledge, we can see that we will assume that 55 is for Godot. Yeah. So that makes if, sense. if you already have all those courses and you just want you just want the basic Godot course, but I also want to give it to Godot, well, one, you can go to their Patreon, you can do that. But two, you could go to us, buy the £10 pledge, add 55 to it, pledge 65 at that tier. We know that 55 goes directly to Godot. Okay? So that's in there for you. Uh, painting in Blender is not great at the moment. Blender terrifies me, just the UI. Yes. Fantastic program. <laughs> Terrifying. Um, it's interesting, we had this... Fun moment with comparing uh, Godot to Blender earlier where we were talking about the way that Blend, uh, not Blender, Godot hides things unless you don't need them. It's very good at concealing extraneous information, which is great if you know that the button is there, right? So you had the picture of the beautiful stucco ceramic plaster monkey. Yeah. Forgot the name of it. Chimpanzee? Monkey? Suzanne. Uh, it's the species I've got wrong. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, add a world environment. We can change the default lighting. So as a world environment, it's like it's got no controls in it. Yeah. There's there's nothing here. There's no ambient lights. I think it's like, oh yeah, you have to press on the word. Now that is changing at 3.1, but if you don't know that's an option, there's just nodes that don't do anything. So again, yeah, it's things... almost like you've got to click randomly and <laughs> it's like those old point and click adventures sometimes. Yeah. But yeah, that... I, I first discovered that when I added a font and nothing happened. And I had to click on the font I added and then tell it what the font was. That is changing at 3.1, but that's kind of why we're doing the course, right? Yeah. Think this is a really powerful engine, but some of the really useful steps are not obvious. So here's how we can do this. Yeah. Uh, what else can we... Uh, I had to think. My thing's over there. I left it over there. Excuse me. I'm just going to look at my list. It's on this computer. There's another computer over here. This is... This is great TV. Uh, here we go. What's my... Who am I? I'm Jan. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, ba 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 so yes, have you guys got oh, any right. other questions? Remember, just prefix it with QSTN so we can see it easily and just ask away. I know what I was going to talk about. So we've uh, discussed how Blender and Godot are really good for one-person teams. Yes. But I think the real strength of this isn't so much one-person teams. We had this moment where you were looking at it, it's like, I'm trying to explain to people the best way I can. This child walking past. Professionals at work here. Not my child. <laughs> Cool. That, that's not part of the course. That's a freebie. Um, 
we were discussing um, what's the best way we can explain if you can already use Blender to high level, yeah. why would I as an individual go to Godot? Um, there, I mean, there were a few reasons for that. Yep. Which, I mean, you had some good ones, so... Well, one, the, the first one, as I was saying earlier, is just seeing your your model in a different light. Yeah. That itself, just move... And I, the, the actual Blender model that I'd made of Suzanne the monkey brought it in. I was like, oh, that's immediate... It was immediately better. Now, I could have got the Blender one up to the same standard, but it's all about iteration at this point. I'm right. experimenting. I'm trying to see what my model looks like if I do X, Y, and Z to it. And if I can achieve that, again, going back to tooling quickly even if it means exporting it to another program hang on to get the to child point, crashed the steam crash yeah child crash child crash <laughs> dope there we go hello you're not typing i am just nothing about it. okay we should be live now if we are live now uh say not blamange not blamange should be fixed soon Do, 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 do. Yay! Woo! Woo! We're back! We were saying all this stuff about. Okay, so um, advanced where, 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 where using uh, Godot if you're a Blender expert include iteration. Yeah. And playing around with stuff. Um, includes things like um, it's much easier to bring physics in. It's a game engine built in, right? Now you can use Blender's game engine. I'm not quite sure what's happening with that at the moment. Well, the, well, the thing with physics, of course, is that Blender's got its own physics engine and it can take ages to bake something. Mm hmm. Whereas a, a, a lot of the times in a game engine, it just does it much quicker. Yeah. I mean, the PBR side, obviously Eevee's coming, but the PBR side in in Godot, spot on. Right. I was impressed with the, the, the rendering output I was seeing right in front of me there. That was brilliant. And, and the same with physics. If you were bringing physics in, you could probably have a scene that was much more complicated. Of course, in Blender, to see real-time physics, you'd have to bake the physics yeah. and then render the animation... And, and if you wanted it as high quality as you could have it in a game engine, you'd be waiting a long time. Now, I will say at this point, I've mentioned Eevee a couple of the times, which is the, I'm going to go say real time. It's not. <laughs> it's going to be real time-esque, which is much better than what we've got currently with Cycles, where you're waiting for it to chug away and away and away. Um, I've seen some animations, quite complex scenes running on 1080 Ti's, you know. You're right really powerful hardware and with super processors and all that lot but it's still running at around 15 to 20 frames per second now don't get me wrong that's better than 20 frames per day <laughs> <laughs> which is what we're used to yeah. as blender artists um but again being able to see how a scene interacts with it um spot on you know j right just seeing something and of course Godot has its own animation player that you can animate your 2d and 3d scale meshes yes. and everything else in fact so it's much easier to play with then let's bake a brand new animation and import it well yes i mean uh, when it comes to the animation itself you can pick and choose yep and again it's tooling if you might have made a basic animation in blender and then you just refine it in Godot. yep or you might have imported a, a you imported something into Godot. That doesn't have an animation. Mm. Providing it's got a rig, a skeletal rig, you can go ahead and do that. Yep. Um, I think one of the big advantages, though, is um, because we figured out, or you figured out, you did all the work, how to import this stuff into yes. Godot pretty easily, considering. Yes. Um, Came across... There, there were numerous hiccups along the way. Right. There several gotchas, as when we say. When you found them, yep. the, the process itself, once you've understood it, is not that complicated. It's really good for small teams, right? Yes. You've got a couple of people writing the engine or the, the, the game code. Unless you're modifying the engine, you can. It's got to. You can yeah. modify it. It's open source. You've got one person doing models, one person doing scenery, and you just import them. And with the scene and node system, really easy to do, especially if you've got good version control. Get yes. version control. I've just noticed that Durgan Kale Gaming, who's an old friend of mine, is here. Hi, Matt. Okay. Um, th three R ton. 30 ton? I know. Uh, I got this wrong last time as well. I'm going to say third ton. Um, will we look at setting up dynamics for environments and characters in Godot, such as tall grass reacting to character, boulders that act physically, simple ponytails, capes for characters? That's a, that's a Godot question. I can hand it straight to you. I, I, will just, I will just come in quickly and say, like, a lot of what you see is not a physics engine running for capes a lot of the time. 
it has been done with a physics engine, it's then baked. So it still looks convincing and it doesn't tax the CPU of the person playing the game. Incredibly important, of course, if you're on a mobile device or a lower powered device. You, you can't expect them to do a full physics render. And that's, that's ultimately what uh, game engines do really well, is faking it really, really well. Yeah. And obviously um, there are things like NVIDIA's Gameworks, which do all the fancy hair and everything as well. So th there's this kind of crossover where, um, I, I, just digressing just slightly, recently uh, Unity had this update where they had these gorgeous cars and they were showing off their new rendering engine and everything along those lines. Uh, and Ben and I were sat down and we were... We, we scratched a bit. I was like, wow, look at this. And then it slowly dawns on you, so much of that is baked. Yep. And that that's brilliant. You know, that's not saying, oh, that's rubbish. But once you've baked something, that just means that someone else has spent all the time processing that data and getting it to that shiny point. But that's the magic of any kind of game or storytelling. Um, it's true in film. Yeah. Like the edit you see is not what you think you see. Uh, the example that I was taught in college is uh, when you look at a camera and someone walks into a front door and the next shot they're in a house, there is nothing telling you that door is connected to that house. You've made that leap, right? Yes. It's just smoke and mirrors. It's, it's um, sleight of hand is what it is. You think this ponytail is moving realistically because you're not looking closely enough because you don't know to look closely enough. Yes. So that kind of thing, if you understand Blender, is probably already doable within your animation. Yes, If you're certainly. talking about real-time calculation, it really depends on where we are. Um, we can, the question is how much time do we want to spend on that specific idea and not branching out into other critical concepts? I would say that was a really nice to have. That's, that's a nice bit of spit and polish really, really adds to a game, mm. but that's something you would, you, you, would, you wouldn't bake in necessarily from the beginning, unless it was a hair and cloth physics game. Then it, then it becomes the main part of the game. Um, but otherwise, that is really nice to have at the end. And of course, it's something that you can iterate towards. Right. Let, let's face it, if your game, you, you need to get your game out there to someone as quickly as possible. That's, uh, as a game developer, that's what you want to do. Unless you're doing it purely hedonistically for yourself, it's about getting your game in the hands of people who are going to play it. And if you've spent hours and hours saying, look at that cloth, look at that ponytail, look at whatever... But that's not the core game mechanic. That's not what's going to get people excited about the game. It's a tech demo. It's a tech demo at that point, yes. Yeah. Um, Which and... can be valuable. If you want to show, I don't know, a studio, look what we could make. Mm. Great. But in terms of a gameplay experience, it's, it's better to fake it, usually. Yeah, uh, definitely. It's, it's the kind of shortcut that games are made of. Um, it's a nice to have if we are at a point where we're covering pretty high-end content quite easily then yes. But for instance, with the grass thing, it feels like it'd be much easier to do with particles and maybe a shader, like you apply a shader around the character so it looks like the particle, the, the grass is moving. So we don't actually have to create blades of grass that are actually calculating the physics. Well, you could even, this is the thing, there are multiple ways that you could go about that. You could um, literally have sprites in the ground yep. that do get knocked about. Just simple planes or maybe a bit more advanced than a simple plane. But I mean, that's the old that, that move about. doom solution right you put all the plants on well doom was all of them um yeah. there were games like was it quake it had foliage as a 2d plane and, and it always looked at you yeah you and you just didn't notice <laughs> until you looked and at that game you're moving too far so why yes. would you notice it and that's a good question if you're modeling if you're if, uh, sort of a zelda type game where you're running through fields of corn that's part of the gameplay experience that the grass parts as you go through or um i think it was in tomb raider i spotted that yeah. when you're walking through the snow or when you go through, you know, those, those sort of things bring, really add to the home. game. But if you've got a game that's, say, more like Diablo, the, the grass moving as you go through it will be good enough for the effect. You're so far away from the character that none of that actually matters. Actually, that brings us back to one of my favourite topics, which is the essential experience. If you've taken the board game design course, you know this, right? For me, the game isn't the engine, and it's not the no. software, and it's not the board, it's not the rules. For me, the game is the experience. What's the player feeling? That's what I'm designing. All of this stuff, the engine, the graphics, the yeah. code, those are the tools, those aren't the game. So if the game is, uh, here is Lara Croft, she is stranded in this horrible survival situation, she's freezing, she's starving, uh, people are trying to kill her, she has no health, then mimicking things like 
terrible snow and leaving deep footprints in it is vital. That's part of that experience. Yes. Definitely. If it's something like Diablo, that's not part of the experience. The experience is, look at me, I can wipe out this entire room of things and it's so sparkly <laughs> and pretty. These hordes of demons, yes. Right. That is the, that's the essential experience. What do I want the player to feel? Um, yes. Which, if you have pledged at the £15 and most of the above pledges, you'll get that course for free. Because, well, included. Not free, you're paying for it. Um, but the board game design course covers a lot of stuff with the essential yes. experience and what you can do with it. There's another question here. Will we be seeing a fully animated cube dude in Godot? Well, we've well, already seen a mostly animated one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's been in there. That was in the, both the blog post and the YouTube video. Um, but on top of that... Um, Diving in, I'm going to steal the show for a few seconds. The characters course is getting another section being written at the moment. If you hop there, there's a few lectures already there. So we're not we're advancing now from Cube Dude. We're going to do a bit more modeling and actually getting our characters more like a character and less like a Cube Dude. Yep. And we were even talking about potential crossovers between the courses, right? Yes. Which is really useful if you've got a small team of people or if you're an indie developer. And potentially, I mean, he was sending out, do, do we need any specific... Um, Characters for specific courses. I'm not going to spoil the, the thing. We don't need one yet because we're not 3D, but there is potential later on that we will have yes. a specific Tuka Godot character, Tuka, um, Tuka. <laughs> that will be brought in. <laughs> so that'll be exciting. Yes. Uh, if we do get a Tukan, it will be for a local multiplayer game because you need at least two people. Yeah, because... two can play. Yep. Yeah. Section. Although all our sections have two names, so they have to be. Oh no, two can play. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Section 19, and now, no, no, not a Kickstarter promise. <laughs> we were looking at some of the Kickstarter promises this morning. It's like, oh my God, we promised the moon in some of these Kickstarters. Great, we're still working towards it, but like four, three years later, we're like, we should probably finish this one. Because mm. uh, we, we want to keep people, you know, learning and engaged and happy. Uh, while we're doing this, I don't know how to use these shortcuts. Can you use this shortcut just to amp up the Kickstarter link, if you don't know it? Oh, good. You type the letters in. There we go. Boom. There's the Kickstarter. <gasps> it's magic. Um, that's one thing I had issues with. Armature stretches in vertex groups in an organic model. Same. Yes, you um, with, with cube. <laughs> so um, if you imagine a very rigid um, arm like Cube Dude has, he's just a, a rectangle, a cuboid. Um, when you bend it, his elbow, obviously when, when you do that with your arm, the body changes it doesn't suddenly lose volume. You don't disappear. No, it doesn't pinch into nothing. I mean, unless um, you spend a lot of time at CrossFit. Maybe. Yeah. Hi, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so there are, there are numerous ways of trying to fix those issues. And one of them, the reason why it happens so readily with just Cube Dude, is simply because he doesn't have any geometry there. So, yeah. we, so we can't distribute the bending around there. So we can't weight paint. And that's something that will be coming up um, as we start to develop the latest character. And there is some great stuff coming for character animation and development in Godot. And in fact, scenery development in 3.1. We're getting CSG support, which is all the old uh, Doom level modeling where you're using Boolean functions on geometry. So here is a cube. I'm going to subtract this uh, smaller cube from it. Now it's a hollow sphere. And here is a sphere that I'm adding to it. And now it's a round thing. And if it, that's, That's going to be brilliant for level editing, being able to get something prototyped done. very, very quickly. Very quick, and it's live calculation, so you can actually animate the stuff going through it, which is stunning. Um, really great for like explosions through walls and stuff. Um, <laughs> there's uh, massive improvements coming to the animation player, including the ability to really see uh, the linear transposition and apply Bezier curve to it, so you can really control how that animation plays out. Great in 2D and 3D. Yeah. Uh, 2D mesh deformation, Ooh. which is a really fancy animation technique that I know from animation software, not from game software, uh, where I'm going to bring in a sprite, and then I'm going to put the skeletal mesh on that one sprite, and then I'm going to animate that by deforming the mesh, which is very fancy. I yes, like that. I like that. Uh, we're also going to have much better inspector, so we won't lose things like where's the uh, world environment controls. We can actually see them. Um, Da, 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 da. Excellent to hear. Just the right timing as usual, guys. I reached the end of learning and content I need is just around the corner. Oh, we've got you, Mark. We've got a <laughs> bunch of content coming. Um, and we're even talking about the next few courses and all kinds of stuff, which we're not announcing today. That's another thing. Yes. Um, always, always busy. Yep. Uh, we don't have any fresh questions in, so I'm going to ask some questions myself. Uh, what was the first reaction you had when you opened Goddard? Well, to be quite... Blunt and truthful is, why is it crashing? Yep. 
So we've if, you, if, if you download the version with mono develop attached, it will crash because yeah. of a version conflict of mono develop. And I was just like, which is being patched. And in fact, yeah. one of our community members, uh, Russ, who is spec chum on discord, um, has a build that he hosts that has that fixed. Yeah. But yeah, uh, just 10 minutes to roll, uh, to roll tonight. That's Ben. I'm not typing things. Uh, yeah. We're winding things up right now. Um, he beat me to it. I was waiting for that to say 50 minutes. I was too. Yes. He's magic. Where I, is he? Ah! <laughs> he's at the fucking window. Or he's at the window. <laughs> I didn't swear. You dreamed that. Um, uh, I was going to say, yes, the Kickstarter. So we are doing really well. Uh, we would love to bring in some more um, pledge goals. I was about to promise free pledge goal. That is so creepy. He doesn't get less creepy with age. He was like that when he... When I met him... When he was seven, he'd been expelled from three schools. So he's gotten a lot better since then. But um, that's a complete lie. I don't know how many schools it was. Um, <laughs> I'm fired, aren't I? <laughs> he's walked away. That's good. Is it? Um, the Kickstarter's doing really well. We want to get it even better. So anything you guys can do to help, spread the word, pledge if you can, donate money to the to the God of Foundation if you feel that you can and you want to. Yes. Um, you can play with these things. If you want to play with 3.1, this is an open source engine. You can go to the Git. You can download it and build it from source and play with it right now. Yes. Um, it's a little more work than you might need to. Um, don't put me and Ben in the same room. Excellent comment, Mark. We'll avoid doing that. Um, <laughs> accidentally pressed enter when Ben appeared. Yep. That's just asking for trouble. Yep. Um, <laughs> So yeah, any final questions we've got? Uh, we'll be looking at making a cutscene in Godo. Nothing epic, but triggered predefined animations from the eventing game. Yes, I think that's a valuable thing. Especially as they're adding new cinematic controls in 3.1. I, I mean, that sort of thing, again, uh, on top of the sound and everything else, it adds to the game. It can help set the scene if you need some exposition as to why the character's there, what they're doing, or how they got into that situation that you're about to get them out of. I don't have a specific plan for where to put that, but that is a really good thing to put in. I think there should be at least one gun with a gun. Game. Game. I've been living in America a long time. Um, <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. Um, yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. Um, I should actually make a note of that, otherwise I will forget it. I'll put it above my um, Jiggle JPG. Jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Uh, if you don't know what that is, the last live stream, um, our guest, Juan, who wrote Godo, uh, he's the lead developer, uh, plenty of people have been writing it with him, but he was the one who invented it, didn't have a webcam handy, so Ben animated the picture by jiggling it. Um, so, I want the cutscenes. Uh, I missed that bit, but now it all makes sense. It I thought does. He, I thought he was just crazy. It, well, either or. Um... Find a few things. Yes, uh, we have some great bundles out there. If you are interested in buying a bundle but you have some of the courses, you can give them away as gifts. Yep. Uh, we have a small handful of lifetime memberships left. They're actually We actually had to add some because they were going so fast. Um, we only offer lifetime memberships in... Um, in Kickstarters. In Kickstarters. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, that allows you access to all existing content, all future content, beta access to future content, and I think Ben is now promising access to future live events if we run any. And one thing I will say about beta access or beta access to the courses, it's not just you're getting to go through the rough and ready with us as we're developing. It actually means you get a hand in their creation ah. itself. That's the, that, that, that's the real value there. Is and it you, you actually get to put a piece of yourself into our courses, which is brilliant. Stream is do, 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 do. You know, there reports I, that it's balked. I th I think it's because we're on a Mac. I think you're right. I think it's because we're on a Mac. Stop streaming. I really hope that worked. Um, we we apologise for the interruption <laughs> to the stream. Capella. Oh, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you, London. Well, not London. Thank you, Cambridge. Woo! Uh, there we go. Um, yeah, so where were we? I don't know. Oh, bundles, uh, Kickstarter, uh, lifetime backers. Uh, Kickstarter is the only time we offer lifetime backers. Yes. Uh, lifetime membership. What do and you get for that? 
Well, you get access to all of our current courses, all of our future courses, beta access, and we'll get back to that in a moment, and potential access to live streams, not live streams, live events, events. in the future. If More on that in future. Whatever that may be. But the beta access itself, I was just saying the stream disappeared completely, um, is you, you get, an, it's not just dragging you through the mud as we're starting to take something apart and figure out how it works. You get a chance to help steer what we do. Yeah. That's one of the major things. And we're ever so grateful for having oh, yeah. people saying exactly what they want to learn. And that's ultimately... So, we, we want to give you not only a great course, but a course that you actually want, that teaches you the things that you want to learn. Yeah. And uh, one of the reasons that we don't present here is an entire complete course is we want to adapt to the feedback. So what we do is when we're prior to this course, we'll get the first two hours usually out there, get the lifetime members in, and then more often than not, which is what happened with Godot, re-record the entire thing based on feedback, run it through them again, and then fix it, which is what's been happening. Yes. Um, down again, Ben's outside checking the cable. Oh, for the... Do, do, do. <clears throat> I'm a little teapot covered in jam. Here is my handle. My name is Jan. If you hear me singing, this probably working. This song was originally written for the Looney Lips game. Okay, that, I think that should be working. Well, we're going to find out. Let's find out if you guys can hear us. My milkshake brings all the boys to the... No. I mean, no. I could teach you, but I, well, I'm running a Kickstarter right now. See if that works. Yay! Yay! <laughs> That's a long gap. Oh, oh no, it's gone stream status bad again. Oh, for the okay. Do, do you think it's Ben's internet or the I Mac? I think he's running too many computers. I think it's the Mac. I'm not a big fan of the Mac, but that's just me. <laughs> um, back now, but a bit stop and start. 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 Yes. Uh, the Looney Lips here. Da, 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 We should make a Disney course. We were actually thinking one of the pledges we could do is the a cappella album. Yes. Because we've been amusing each other all day with that. Although we, we wouldn't be able to get away with the copyright, would we? That's it's a couple. Problem. Oh, okay. Our fair use. Yeah. No, if we, if oh, we, we got to get it before that new EU legislation oh, yeah, comes in. Um, but none of that is relevant right now. Folks, if you love Mac, that is great. You should love Mac. If you love PC, that is great. You should love PC. If you like Linux, also great. They're, if you they're, like... they're tools. We've said this earlier. They are tools to get a job done. If you like the Ouya, I don't know what's wrong with you. Um... What, a Raspberry Pi? The Raspberry Pi is quite lovely. Yes. Um, folks, it has been fantastic being here with you. I hope that you've enjoyed this thing. I don't know how many views we can see right now because... We don't want to touch thing. anything in case it breaks again. Yep. I'm <laughs> not touching the screen. Um, get the word out. We're really excited about these things. If you have ideas of things you'd like to see in pledges, we are listening. We're on the Facebook group. I am always on Discord when I'm on the computer. Yep. Unless I'm teaching, in which case I switch it off. Um, there's Twitter. Uh, I'm on the Goddard Reddit. Uh, he's on the Blender Facebook group. I'm technically on there too, but I don't post anything in there. Um, Pi is not an operating system. No. It's not. Mm, Pi. But HTML is a programming language. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get some hate mail. Um, folks, send it that way. we've got some great live streams coming in the next few days. Uh, I believe the next one is either with Remy or Lars. I've forgotten, but check out the uh, Kickstarter update. Yes. Uh, which, if you didn't come here from Kickstarter, if you click the link in the, as Hank Green says, the doobly do in the thing underneath the description, that'll take you to the Kickstarter page. Click on the updates, yep. even if you don't pledge and you just want to see. We've got um, how to edit the engine to empower game designers. We've got a uh, live stream with uh, Lars, whose name I've just, the last I've just forgotten, who is a professor of, well, no, the Dean of Engineering at the Berlin School of Game Design. I believe I said that right. Um, then we have the uh, interview with Remy, yep. who is the project manager for Godot. And then we have the Kickstarter end party, whoop, which I will try and bring the toucan for. Um, folks, until the next time the stream, <laughs> until the next stream, until the stream ends, um, it's been great. Love all the lovely Godo people. Thank yes. you, Mike, for joining us and for the That's extra okay. content and for the guides. Uh, thank you, Ben, who's not here. and for he, his... might, he might be behind those blinds. We don't know. And for the magical child who um, has powers over streams. <laughs> um, we will see you in the next stream. And well, um, Thank you for joining us. We've been us. Bye. You've been you. <laughs> see ya. Where's the button? <laughs>